Good morning and welcome to Flashpoint. I'm Lauren Rowe. Well, it's been a long time since she's been here on Flashpoint because she's been very busy running Orange County. But I'm happy to say today that I have Mayor Teresa Jacobs with us as our guest for this morning's program. Mayor, thanks for coming. Absolutely. You have been very busy, and uh, I've been asking for you to come on for quite a while now, so I'm glad that you are finally here and we can talk about a number of things. But because you haven't been here in a long time, I really do just kind of want to start with what has been your first year and a half in office. When you got in there, what has been the most shocking thing? Mm. Wow. Uh, you know, you would think you'd be prepared for everything having spent eight years on the commission, but the pace at which issues come up, um, the amount of things that we deal with from day to day and week to week and the surprises is probably the biggest surprise. Um, it's been a lot more rewarding in a lot of ways than I expected. I, part of the role of mayor is not just being the face and chairing the meetings, but it's also being the CEO of the organization. And I've never had that um, experience before, and, and I've absolutely loved that. One of the very first things I did before I was even sworn in was had uh, about 23 meetings with um, small groups of staff, opened it up to every single member of Orange County staff to just sit and talk about you know, why did I run? What's important to me as a citizen, as their, um, as their boss, as the mayor of Orange County? What's important to them? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Um, and then establishing some values and expectations. And it's, that part's been tremendously rewarding. You know, before I do these shows, the, not all of my questions come from my brain. I do go around and, and ask questions uh, from the community, from my family, from my neighbors, from my coworkers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that kept coming up in the conversations, is, says, you know, I'm going to be interviewing the mayor this week. And, and someone said to me, you know, I think she's really popular uh, with the populist vote. But the question is, she always seems to be contrarian, that you tend to take the contrary position. And they always wondered, are you coming around to a different decision based on the evolution of what you learn or do you automatically take that contrary mm. position because you feel that that's the best way to begin oh gosh no oh gosh no no i don't think it's the best way to begin um and and i don't and i don't think that's accurate either but and you're in you're in the media you know how this works when i'm not taking um a contrary uh position it's not going to get reported on the eight years I was on the commission, most of the time I was on the prevailing side of, you know, 7-0 um, votes. Mm -hmm. But that never made the news. The only time that I am typically in the news is when I am taking a contrary position or as mayor if, if there's a, you know, um, a, a very controversial issue. So that's what people see more of, but that's hardly the case. Well, we'll get to some more of the controversial issues yeah. in a little bit, but I am very curious about where we stand financially in Orange County. Mm. Uh, we know that the tourist development tax is finally back up, and I think people, you know, say, all right, you know, the theme parks are doing well, convention centers doing well, uh, we are seeing sunnier times, but we are no nowhere near catching up to where we were before this recession. What exactly did you inherit walking into this position? Well, certainly um, it's a much tougher time than it's probably been in my lifetime to be in local government. And it's not, that part's not going to get easier anytime soon. Um, we, we know what's happening with the economy as a whole and, and we see what's happening um, with the European economy and what a, a p impact that's having. But we've also had some dramatic changes in local government tax structure. Um, some uh, constitutional amendments that were on the ballot that have changed the way local governments collect and can spend taxes and, and more that are on the ballot this fall. So I've inherited a much more challenging um, uh, environment in order to provide the services. Give me an example. Um, well, an example is going forward, we will probably see a maximum growth rate in property taxes of 4%. In the past, we've seen 8, 10, 12% growth rate. Um, it's unlikely that we will be able to hold our cost at 4%. The cost of health care has been going up by more than that. The cost of um, 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 fuel is going up. Two major drivers in the cost of doing business as a government. And that means that we have been, year, for the last four, five, six years now, having to make cuts and run the organization more efficiently. I've just, I've just had to eliminate another 23 positions in Orange County after eliminating 60 earlier this year. Most of those, you know, we look for opportunities to eliminate positions that are open where somebody has retired or moved on, um, but we are constantly in the, um, the role of, of finding efficiencies and um, using technology. And it's difficult, but I do, I mean, that is a strength of mine. It's, some, it's my natural inclination is to be fiscally conservative, so that fits rather well with the environment we're in. Top three priorities right now, and have they changed mm. since you took office? Mm. Oh, well, 
No, I don't. I doubt that they've changed. I mean, since I ran for office the very first time in 2000, one of my greatest priorities is public public trust, making sure that we have a government that people can believe in, that they can trust. And you talked about contrary positions. Um, strangely enough, some of the things that have uh, have created the most controversy and I've been maybe in the hot water over have been issues involving ethics, higher standards of disclosure, higher standards of ethical behavior at the state level, at the local level, at the expressway authority. And that does ruffle feathers sometimes. That's not the way things are done. Um, I think it's the way things should be done. So. Having a government that people can believe in is, is crucial. Having people, having a government that's open that people can um, actively engage in and know that their, their input matters, um, that's a top priority. Looking at our economic development um, and our future, our economic diversification going forward, we've done so much in the last 10 years. Um, working on the state of the county address for next week, yeah, anything big going to come out in the state of the um, county? Yeah, Can I break yeah. any news? You know I like to break news on Flashpoint. Anything yeah. that you're going to address that we that might surprise us? I don't, I don't think there's going to be any. There's no shockers. Um, there was a time when the state of the county was the, um, the time when uh, the mayor had to roll out a new program. I always called it the, the program of the year address. Um, those days are, are, are behind us because we're not rolling in, in increased revenue year after year. But I do think it's a great opportunity to kind of reflect on where we are. And it's easy in this um, economy and in these uncertain times to look at where we wish we were. But if we can look back over the last 10 years and see how far we've come, it's, it's pretty overwhelmingly positive, um, the direction that we've taken in terms of economic development and the future ahead of us. And that's a huge priority of mine, is making sure that we have a bright future for our kids, we have job opportunities, we have the, the, the types of jobs that create the quality of life that sustains this community. And, um, and then always has, has been a priority of mine is, is how do you manage all that while protecting our, our environment, air quality, water quality, and the green spaces that are so important. So you, you put right. those together, the people, the environment, and the jobs, and well, that we, speaks for it all. We know that open government is, is clearly your top priority. Um, and this, this week, we saw um, an example of open government that was bizarre to a lot of us, in the media even, uh, a meeting between you and Mayor Dyer over at the Citrus Bowl. And again, it was, it was long anticipated because there had been um, the rumors of, uh, and the perception of a strange relationship between you and the mayor, um, a battle over the Citrus Bowl, um, conversations about whether the county had reneged on a deal that, that they were going to provide more funding. So, first of all, the meeting in the sunshine the way it was, mm -hmm. was incredibly uncomfortable to watch. So tell me a little bit how this meeting happened, why, and, and where we stand right now with the Citrus Bowl, and, and how Absolutely. you really feel about the project. Absolutely. Um, let me start with the meeting. Uh, the meeting was mandatory by law under the Florida Sunshine Act that we hold it that way because Mayor Dyer and I both sit on the Tourist Development Council, a council that will ultimately likely have to make uh, cast a vote regarding any changes that we would make um, to the funding agreements that we entered into in 2007. So by law, we can't meet in the private to discuss how we might vote in the future. And that's a very, I mean, that, that law, I, I believe, serves a very positive purpose. But in a situation like that, it was, you know, it was a little awkward. It would have been nice to just be able to sit behind closed doors and have a cup of coffee and talk, but there's great value in the public knowing what's happening in those conversations. And there's great value in the Citrus But there Bowl. are conversations that happen before that conversation, just between no. intermediaries? No. Intermediaries? In this case, there's uh, no, no negotiations going on between the county and the city before you actually there, sit that down? That meeting there was not, believe it or not. The only negotiations was when and where is the meeting going to be held? And it wasn't even negotiations. It was just, you know, we realized it was going to have to be in the sunshine, and we let Mayor Dyer's office know that that's the way we had to conduct it. And, and then, it, and, you know, obviously they had questions about the format and whatnot, and, and it was going to be just like if we were having the meeting by ourselves. But that's, that's, that's not altogether a bad thing. I mean, it's healthy for anything that we have to say. Frankly, people should have a right to know what we're saying. And it may seem a bit awkward to have a bunch of people sitting around listening to your conversation, but it affects not just the uh, Florida Citrus Sports, it affects uh, Performing Arts Center. Those folks want to know what's being said. Um, so, I, you know, the hoteliers, they want to know what's being said. So and you're pretty comfortable with the deal that was struck. Is this going to happen, though? Well, because there's still a lot know. of conversation about whether the details will actually get voted on right. and will it will actually yeah. go through. You know, um, I, was, I was surprised. We have wondered, because um, Mayor Dyer had said that they couldn't issue the debt 
in, in the agreement we entered into in 2007, our commitment was to give the city all the excess, um, the surplus TDT revenue that isn't necessary for the convention center visit Orlando. And we have a, you know, we have an agreement that shows exactly what that threshold is year after year. And we honored that completely. But of course, with the decline in tourist tax revenues, the surpluses weren't there for a couple of years. The city's obligation was to issue debt and to secure it using their CRA, their um, Community Redevelopment Agency. Well, with decline in property values, they aren't able to do that because of the debt capacity. So you've got two things going on. You had lower mm -hmm. revenues coming into them, plus you had the inability of the city to issue debt um, using that vehicle. Uh, Mayor Dyer has said he would not issue debt using general revenue. So I felt like we were probably at a stalemate because he wouldn't be able to issue the debt and I've got to protect the convention center and, and our board's not going to issue the debt. And you can't build it without debt because you, there's no way you're going to suddenly have $175 million cash. So his point is he still has to come up with the money. He has to, yeah, he's got, he has to issue the debt and he wants us to um, provide a, a guarantee of some sort. I'm prepared to provide a, you know, a finite amount of uh, guarantee. And I think our staff's are meeting tomorrow. So we'll have a much better idea tomorrow. I hope it, I can't tell you how much I hope it works. I was very excited yesterday that Mayor Dyer believes he has a vehicle you to issue You think it's important to have an updated Citrus Bowl? Well, I think, yes, I think that the economic benefit, you can debate whether it's 40 million a year or 80 million a year or 100 million a year. I don't know what the number is, but I do know that there is a, a definite economic value of having the games that we have here. We, we also know that we are likely to lose our ranking a little bit just by the change in the bowl structure. But I still think that there's value. I think that this is a very appealing market. And um, had an opportunity to sit down with Steve Hogan and Bill Diamond and, um, and just you know, candidly talk about what are those negotiations like, mm -hmm. what matters. And I will tell you, I came in initially a little skeptical thinking that's not why people come here. But there are some changes. It's complicated, but there are some changes um, that have taken place that have nothing to do with our arena, but have everything to do with the amount of money that these teams make when they come here. And if we don't, if they don't make the same amount of money, if they come here, they won't come here. So it's about money. Sorry, but it's about money. Okay, but it's wait. about money here, too. I got to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue to talk about uh, the mayors, their relationship. And we'll also talk about a couple of other things. The uh, Orange County Expressway Authority, uh, a push to remove Mayor Jacobs from that board, uh, and the domestic partner, re uh, the domestic partnership registry that was also very controversial. We'll be right back. Stay with us on Flashback. I'm here with Mayor Teresa Jacobs from Orange County. So let's just continue the conversation slightly because I, I did want somewhat of an answer on the relationship between you and Mayor Dyer. Is it a strained relationship? Well, I don't think the relationship is strained. There's going to be times when we're not going to agree. And those times are going to, they're going to be covered more. People are going to pay more attention to them than the times that we do agree. Um, when I see him at events, uh, I like Mayor Dyer. I think he likes me. We get along very well. If you've ever been in an event where we're both speaking, um, it's, it's, I'm very complimentary. He is, too. I think that's all very sincere. Cities and counties have conflicts. There are a lot of things that they share in common, but there are natural conflicts. And to read into those conflicts that there's a personality problem or that there are problems in general, it, it's not, that's not an accurate um, portrayal of what's going on. We disagree on certain issues and we have different constituencies and different obligations and that creates conflicts but those aren't personality. All right so how you do your job has also um, let's say the speed at which you make a decision has also been criticized especially when it came to the domestic partner registry. Um, the city of Orlando had a domestic partner registry um, it was heralded by many people um, I think even didn't Volusia, Volusia County even beat you guys, right? Just barely, yeah. 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 Volusia County okay. even beat you all when it okay. came to the domestic partner registry. Um, we're looking at video, by the way, of okay. the city of Orlando, uh, okay. Commissioner Sheehan. Um, but here's the okay. thing. People question whether you truly didn't believe that there should be domestic partner benefits or domestic partner rights or civil unions, and they took this as a, as a political statement. Okay, so I'd let, like you to be able to yeah, set the record straight absolutely. on that, because of course people yeah. are still suspicious that you had yeah. your own personal beliefs. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I think you have to look at actions and facts, 
rather than what do I think somebody might be feeling? Because I spend a lot of time with people saying, I think you think this. So let's talk about my actions and see if they reconcile with that. The first thing that I did as a, as a mayor was brought forward um, health care benefits for domestic partners. Now, does that strike you as something that I would have done if I was not supportive of equal rights? Of course not. I did that within two months. Everybody's lost sight of that. I dealt with the um, HELP ordinance, which was the more expansive ordinance than has been any, done any place in the country. It's inclusive. It's not, it, it doesn't discriminate based on who you live with, uh, sexual orientation. It is open to everyone. And as I said, that's never been done anywhere in the country. And I did that in 18, less than 18 months of being in office. I'm compared to Mayor Dyer and what he did in his eighth year of office. I think that's a bit unfair. I had a lot on my plate taking office, a lot on my plate, um, dealing with my first budget, dealing with major cutbacks, reorganization, um, a lot of issues that you deal with with your first year. And I would have defended Mayor Dyer if anybody criticized him for not taking this on in his first year. So to be compared, I thought, was a bit unfair. I took on ethics um, while I was a commissioner. I revamped our ethics ordinance in my first year in office. Volusia County doesn't have the ethics ordinance we have. The city of Orlando doesn't have the ethics ordinance we have. There's not a county in the state of Florida that has that. And nobody is looking at that and going, wow, what's the matter with everybody else? So, so I think we have to put it in some context. Let's here. transition out of this conversation because I really think that the ethics has also, uh, your fight for ethics and your wanting to tangle on a state level now um, has also gotten you in a bit of a, of a bind. The legislature or legislators, uh, there was an effort to actually remove you from the Orlando Orange County Expressway Authority. Mm -hmm. Now that didn't happen, but what was no. that about? Well, in plain speak, in plain speak, what was that about? I think I, I frankly think it was payback for positions that I had taken regarding um, the need to be more careful about who goes on the Expressway Authority, not putting people on that have conflicts of interest or recent conflicts of interest. And, um, and I make no apologies for that at, at all. And if I got taken off for my positions, so be it. I mean, sometimes you have to take a stand for things. And I feel very, very strongly that people, that the governor should appoint people um, that will not have conflicts, have not had conflicts. And I made that well known. And um, there's at least one member of the legislature who was not happy with that position. And he's in a very powerful position. I, you know. That's been a difficult moment for you in the past year and a half also. And when you had to d finally say mm -hmm. to the people of Orange County, I'm sorry, but we are going to have to raise tolls. Oh, gosh, yeah. So tell me about that process. Yeah. And, and is it even possible for us to keep tolls down? Well, the, the, problem that we have, the problem we have right now is that in the middle of my campaign, there was a bond issue that had a covenant, a promise in that bond issue that said that they would not do anything to affect the future toll schedule. In fact, our board that I sit on right now, the Expressway Authority, is not going to raise tolls. That schedule was approved before I took office. But the bonds that were sold promised all the bondholders that a new board cannot come back and tinker with that, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I'm not raising tolls, but I can't stop the toll increase because of a legal contract that was entered into while I was in the campaign. And, and the and next legal probably... contract? Or is it just a reality oh. that we're going to have to keep raising tolls? No, it's a legal contract. No, we mm -hmm. don't need those. No, those tolls have to be raised because of that legal contract, mm -hmm. which lasts for 30 years. Oh. Okay? I mean, that was... So it's a done deal. That was pretty clever, you have to admit. In the middle of a campaign where pretty much every candidate that was running was talking about cutting tolls to build a contract in that says you can't touch the tolls that we just approved? Okay. All right, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back here with Mayor Teresa Jacobs. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm here with Mayor Teresa Jacobs. And, and you're not just satisfied with doing, or let's say, you're not just satisfied with uh, shaking the trees here in Orlando or, and Orange County. You, you, you want some of your initiatives to go statewide. Explain to me what you're doing and why. Well, next week the, uh, the State Ethics Commission is going to meet and it's their time when they evaluate what laws they'd like to see changed. They go through this every year um, and mostly they get shot down. 
And so I'm going to ask that they look at some of the things that we've adopted here locally that expand the time frame for what's a conflict of interest so that a person can't um, be in a, in a relationship that's a conflict, sever the relationship, vote to benefit their former partner, two weeks later jump back into the relationship and skirt the intent of the law. That's one how does that affect us here? Well, we've got ourselves covered, but that doesn't mean that the other jurisdictions around us, cities and counties all across the state do. It doesn't mean that the state legislature does. So why do I care? Because it's good government, and if we're going to trust and believe in government, we have to have good elected officials, and people have to have a reason to believe in them. It's just one of my core values, and I have an opportunity to, you know, they're meeting next week. We have an opportunity to get this in front of them, and I actually, I actually think I have a receptive governor for the first time on this issue. So I'm really hoping the governor's going to champion this, too. Do you have aspirations beyond county oh, office? No, I'm, I am absolutely where I want to be. I, I can't even think, uh, you know, beyond. I, want to, I do have aspirations. I want to get reelected in two, in two and a half years. I mean, that's my biggest aspiration right this minute. I loved being a county commissioner. I never imagined being in politics before, but it is extremely rewarding. Serving the public is rewarding. Being Orange County mayor um, is it, an incredible privilege, and this is what I want to do. Okay. Uh, Ten seconds left. That's all I have. But I know you're making a big social media push. All of your yeah. friends over here have told me to make sure to mention it. Uh, lots of uh, e-newsletters, open websites. Yes. All you have to do is really go to the Orange County website and search, right? Yeah. You get, go you to, can the, get go to the website, you click on, please subscribe to my newsletter. Absolutely. I want, I want people to know what's going on in Orange County, and I want to know what they think. And the only way that I can have that relationship is if they'll go to my website, click on my newsletter, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. But most important, provide me with feedback. It's one thing for me to tell you what's going on. I want to know what people are thinking. It's so helpful. Do you tweet yourself? Yes, not often, but I do. <laughs> it's, 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 a scary, it's a scary thing. <laughs> it is a scary, <laughs> it's a scary thing. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. All right, that's it for us. We're out of time. If you ever miss Flashpoint, you can find it on clickorlando.com under the interactive session. Have a great week. Tell your friends about Flashpoint.